guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I am going to be recommending you 14 of the most disturbing books that I've personally ever read. So a lot of these are super, super disturbing to me. <laughs> um, there are a couple that are a little more easy to digest, I guess you could say, but I don't think that this video is for like beginners by all means. Um, I think there are a lot of videos on YouTube recommending disturbing books that are a little, um, <laughs> a lot less disturbing than these ones. So think of this as like disturbing books for advanced people. First things first. Survivor by J.F. Gonzalez. This is one of my all-time favorite extreme horror books. It's the first extreme horror book that I've ever read in my life. So you're following this woman and her husband. They're on like a romantic getaway and they get separated and our main character Lisa gets kidnapped. And these kidnap her, kidnappers want her to star in a snuff film. It is horrible. It is anxiety inducing. It was so disturbing. But at the same time, I just had to know what was going to happen. So this book did have this like nonstop kind of heart pumping, adrenaline inducing feel to it where it was just constant nonstop something was happen action but also extremely graphic and disturbing. And to think that people actually do stuff like this in real life. There is a theme to this video and most of this is because it's real life horror. People are the monsters. People are doing horrible, evil, cruel things. And um, this is a perfect example of that. Next I have Broken Dolls Deliverance by McKay Watson. This is another extreme horror that has that snuff film element to it people doing horrible things to each other. But um, so you're fa following this main character who is, uh, he had a really shitty upbringing. He's just struggling in life and we really get inside his head. There's tons of character development in this one where we actually feel for this main character and learn about his upbringing and his struggles with being gay and um, you really just feel the emotions for this character and now in present day he is a sex worker and he gets involved in a situation just like Survivor he is kidnapped and abducted along with someone that he cares about and it's that whole like is he gonna get out is he the person that he cares about gonna get out very anxiety inducing and because you got that strong character development it really made me emotional reading this. Next is Cows by Matthew Stucco, one of the like famous splatterpunk books out there. So we are following this guy who works on a meat processing factory farm plant. <laughs> My brain's a little hazy. Um, where he is really struggling with life, again, really struggling with mental health and the way that he views himself and other people. And we're following him as he navigates life dealing with an abusive mother and also the horrible things that they do on this factory farm. It is so over the top disgusting. Lots of poop, lots of there is a lot of animal cruelty in this one. Um, it is very over the top disgusting, but it also has these tons, there's tons and tons of themes in this one that you could pick apart about depression, loneliness, mental health, but also like society and the hierarchy of society. And there's just a lot that goes into this one. And I think if you're looking for a gross disturbing read but also is intellectual at the same time this would be a great one for you but this one is like really 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 messed up <laughs> then i have tampa this is more of a really disturbing graphic literary fiction type book i don't know how to describe this but you're following this 20 some year old teacher who is a pedophile and she is attracted to her students who are 
14 and she basically grooms them and you see her you're following her in her head the entire time as she like picks out a student that she's trying to groom and the process and this is very very graphic very detailed very disgusting and disturbing but getting inside of her head like there's just something about reading from her perspective and the thought process that is just terrifying and the realistic aspects of gender and how people view a female doing this to a male student versus if it was a male doing this to a female student. It's like, I, I can't even explain it, but this was just so well written, but so graphic and highly highly disturbing next is burner by robert ford this one is not as detailed and graphic as some of the other ones that i've described but this book is about um sex trafficking it is very very disturbing to think about because this is based on you know real life and obviously something that is a huge issue in real life so it's all the more disturbing to think about so this is about two women you're following them between past and present timelines and their timelines kind of merge at some point but um the one woman finds a burner phone in her late husband's drawer and discovers some horrible things about this man it is so disturbing because it's something that happens in real life every single day it's like a huge issue and to read a fiction book that is so realistic is so disturbing but it's also like shedding light on this issue and he also like includes um some statistics and things about trafficking in here and I just really love the way that this one was done and handled it's not super detailed um, but it, it's just very very chilling to think about and this one I had to finish it in one day it just completely sucked me in I I can't recommend this book enough it was so well done next book is along the path of torment by Chandler Morrison I love this book so much um, it's not as detailed and graphic as some of these other books but we are following some deep dark terrifying subject matter so we're following this guy Ty and his uncle is like this big shot in Hollywood and runs a child prostitution ring I don't know how much I can say on YouTube without getting like the FBI raiding my home um but we are following him as he he's a shitty person as well and he's navigating like what's right versus wrong because he's also having some feelings for this 14 year old girl that his uncle is grooming etc so lots of internal dialogue of yeah this is bad I shouldn't be doing this but like also he's not the best person either uh, again following that deep dark subject subject matter into like the darker side of humanity and Hollywood and this one is another one that hooked me I read it in like one day obsessed switching things up with another literary fiction this is a little life by Hanya Yanagihara one of my favorite books of all time but she's a chunky one uh, we are following Jude as he we're just following him throughout life with his friends and the friendships that he makes but he is a dark troubled soul and he has been through a lot of pain and abuse throughout his life and we're learning about his abuse in detail and his horrible mental health I mean triggers for everything imaginable just one of the most bleak depressing books I've ever read in my life but so well done and so impactful to me like I was hysterically crying reading this and parts of it were like the parts about his mental health were relatable to me so I highly recommend this one um, but it it destroyed me 
Next, let's talk about Judith Sonnet. This is one of the first um, extreme horror splatterpunk books that I've ever read. It has a special place in my heart, but it got me. Like, this one is really messed up. Um, we're following this woman whose daughter gets abducted by someone from the dark web and they basically tell her if she wants to get her daughter back she has to participate in a series of sinister games that get progressively worse and worse and worse in order to see her daughter again and this gets into such dark disturbing territory it gave me anxiety this book was <laughs> so I don't even know how to describe this in words. That's the best that I could describe this book. It was off the walls. I was so anxious reading this, but it just kept me at the edge of my seat and it was really, really messed up, but in like the best way possible. Then sticking with Judas on it, this one is more just straight up splatter punk uh no one rides for free we are following this woman as she is traveling across the country with her two college aged children i i don't know why that word didn't come into my head um she has a boy and a girl and she's driving them to college and she stops at a rest stop gas station whatever and a strange man gets into the car with them and it is wild from there on out the things that this man makes them do it is just gross graphic for the sake of <laughs> for the sake of um but it was just one of the most like well done gross for the sake of being gross sort of books and i just couldn't believe what i was reading this one just kind of blew me away a little bit because i was like this the entire time That was me reading this book. Um, I plead the fifth. Next is one of my holy grail favorite books of all time. It's American Psycho by Bret Easton Ellis. This book I read so long ago and I loved it so much and like it's just everything. This is basically the bible of <laughs> everything. Everything. This is like the structure of all the modern day extreme horror unhinged books. I mean, this is the original. This is the OG right here, right? Like, th this is everything. Anyways, I digress. Um, so of course we're following Patrick Bateman. He's his antisocial personality disorder and we're just following him spiral into a descent of madness the entire book. It's satire, it's fucked up, <laughs> I mean, what's worse, the graphic depictions of violence or him describing outfits over and over and over again the entire book? I mean, <laughs> there's just something about, much like Tampa, like, there's just something about being inside of that person's head the entire book and, like, reading about how he thinks and the way that he, like, uses fashion and uses these things and, like, being a successful businessman to blend in with society and seem like a normal person. There's just something about that that is so terrifying and this book is honestly one of the best books ever written. I'm not kidding. This is... I could, I could talk about this book all day long. Let me know if you want to talk all day long about this because I'm available. Next, let's talk about John Athen. The first one is Into the Wolves' Den. This is about... Oh God, once again with the children. I, there, it's just, it's terrifying subject matter. What can I say? So we are following these two young girls. They get abducted by these crazy men, again, who do horrible things, okay? Film snuff films and do all kinds of crazy things. And we are following their dad as he tries everything he can to get his daughters back and find out who kidnapped them. So we're following him um, trying to search for them and then we're following the two girls and what is going on in this wolf's den where they've been kidnapped to. It is horrifying. This is one of the first like extreme horror vlogs that I've ever done and like I was 
screaming about this book so then I'm gonna throw another John Athen at you and it is shared by two so this one is about stalkers this one freaked me out because stalkers are subject matter that terrify me I have had my own share of situations and fuck um so we are following this guy who's an author and he writes extreme horror and he decides he's going to start writing fantasy and when he um, announces his new novel and that it's a fantasy novel, a very angry fan begins writing him more and more unhinged emails and things progress from there. So uh, the whole stalking situation is terrifying because this is so real life that it scares me. Um, and just the progression of how things get worse and worse and worse. This book is so suspenseful. I was on the edge of my seat. It messed me up. Next, we are going to end on a lighter note here with these two books. Um, <laughs> is it lighter? We're talking about cannibalism. Um, Tender is the Flesh by Agustina Basterica. This is uh, about... So this is a general horror book where uh, animal meat is poisonous and we start factory farming humans and so humans are basically taking care of other humans as cattle to raise and slaughter and we're following this main character and like the moral dilemma that is going on and his depression and it is a very deep dark book but was done so well. It's not super, super over the top graphic like these other books. Like I said, this is general horror that you would like find at Barnes and Noble. Um, but it is so bleak and so depressing. I, this is one of my favorite books of all time. Like this book left me staring at the wall for like hours after I read it. And I will never forget that feeling. <laughs> Last but not least, another more general horror book with some slight extreme horror elements is The Warrior Retreat by John Lynch. This is, once again, like real life horror. It's military horror, so we are following um, this group of guys and they are in the war together and it follows them after they go home years later and how their lives are impacted by the war. Lots of commentary on PTSD, mental health, even like just the social and all the issues wrong with our country. Okay, how we treat veterans, healthcare, like just so many real life topics. John is a veteran who was in the Marines. So it's like, you're getting like first-hand knowledge, okay? And just the ending gave me an actual panic attack. Um, and basically all these guys get together like years later to go to this retreat. And so you're just following their lives and how the war basically impacted them. And it is just gut-wrenching, horrific. Like I said, this book messed me up. This is another one that I vlogged and I like couldn't breathe reading this one. So yeah, that's it. Those are my 14 disturbing book recommendations. Let me know if you've read any of these. If you plan on reading any of these, do not blame me if you need therapy after reading these. I love you guys and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.